If you struggle with your mental health and are prone to depression or anxiety, then you need to be aware of how your circadian rhythms, otherwise known as your sleep-wake cycle, has a huge impact on your daily mood. Hi, I'm Jess, I'm a clinical nutritionist, and this channel is all about optimizing your diet and lifestyle for better mental health. And today we're talking all about circadian rhythms, which is such a foundational process and system that gets overlooked a lot. But the truth is, is when our natural circadian rhythms aren't aligned, we are more prone to mood disturbances in addition to various other health ailments. So today I'm going to give you a brief background to help you understand why circadian rhythms are so crucial for mood disorders. And then we're going to fire through the top three things that I do in my life pretty much on a daily basis, all having to do with circadian rhythms that make the biggest impact on my mood and even prevent me from slipping into a seasonal depression. So what exactly are circadian rhythms anyway? Circadian rhythms are natural 24 hour cycles that regulate various physiological processes in living organisms, including humans. These rhythms are influenced by external cues, primarily light and darkness, and play a crucial role in our sleep-wake cycle, our body temperature, hormone production, and other bodily functions that all impact our physical and mental health. Let's fire through some of the ways that circadian rhythms impact our mental health. First is our sleep patterns. Circadian rhythms strongly influence our sleep-wake cycle and poor sleep quality and quantity are associated with various mental health issues, including anxiety, depression, and mood disorders. Number two, mood regulation. Circadian rhythms play a huge role in regulating mood-related processes and the disruption of these rhythms are seen in conditions like seasonal affective disorder, otherwise known as SAD, which leads to depressive symptoms, especially during the winter months where there is less natural light exposure. Three, cognitive function. Cognitive function like memory, attention, and decision-making are all influenced by circadian rhythms. Four, hormone production. Circadian rhythms influence the release of various hormones, including cortisol, a stress hormone, and melatonin, which regulates sleep-wake cycles. And number five, psychiatric disorders themselves. Circadian rhythm disruptions have been linked to the onset and exacerbation of various psychiatric disorders. For example, bipolar disorder is characterized by significant disruptions in circadian rhythms, leading to mood swings and disrupted sleep patterns but even just depression and anxiety has been associated with circadian rhythm dysregulation like we talked about with SAD. So what are we gonna do about this? One of the biggest challenges in modern day society right now is that we are operating in a way that it's fundamentally misaligned with the rising and the setting of the sun. So we're indoors most of the day, we receive a lot of artificial light and blue light even after the sun goes down, and then we just just have a lot of daily habits that further contradict these internal clock cycles. The second biggest challenge is that while many of us would love to be like traveling nomads, live and work on an alpaca farm, or just be outside more and on our computers less, we have to work within the lives that we currently have and having acceptance for that is really the first step and then figuring out how we can align these cycles in our daily lives. I work from home, I have a YouTube channel, I'm an introvert, I essentially spend like 80% of my day on the computer. So if incorporating some of these hacks can work for me, there's likely a pretty good chance that they're gonna work for you too. So let's talk about the top three things that I do every day to make sure my circadian rhythms are in alignment. So number one is being really intentional and cognizant about your sleep-wake cycle. And specifically what I'm talking about here is having a routine where you essentially go to bed and wake up around the same time each day. The exact time that you wake up and go to bed is less important than being consistent with it because our bodies and these internal clocks very much thrive on routine. 
And there are actually different chronotypes. So there's early birds like me, and then you have your night owls. And some of these factors are actually genetic. If you're an early bird, your circadian rhythms help you release melatonin earlier, which makes you more active during the day. Night owls, however, secrete melatonin much later, which tends to push their peak alertness to later in the afternoon or in the evenings. The point is, is that the slight alteration in staying up a few hours later really shouldn't make that much of a difference unless you are, of course, doing something like night shift working that has shown to have a huge impact on circadian rhythm function, dysregulation, and it has in fact been associated with a lot of increased health risks. I try and go to bed every day by 10 p.m. because that follows a natural cortisol and melatonin pattern, and if I miss that window, then I might have a harder time falling asleep. And then I also wake up around the same time every morning, and even on the weekends, I might sleep in a little bit, but I'm still within an hour range of when I go to bed and when I wake up every single day. Number two is light exposure. So one of the most helpful things that you can do for circadian rhythms in regards to light exposure is basically exposing your eyes to a certain frequency of light as soon as possible when you get up in the morning. So you can do this in the traditional way of, oh my gosh, it's so bright. So you can do this in the traditional way, going for a walk in the morning. I love doing this in the summer when it's brighter earlier with Chandler. But what about when it's still dark when you get up? Well, those of you who know me know that I am a huge fan of red light therapy. I have been using the Juve for over six years now. But what I wanted to tell you about this is, although I got this for seasonal depression when I lived in the Pacific Northwest, I have never stopped using it since. I literally use it every single day in the morning for 20 or so minutes while I meditate, even in the summer when it's 100 degrees outside because it really helps with my circadian rhythms. It helps me feel awake and alert in the morning. And now that it is getting darker earlier in the morning, this is what I use for that light stimulation when I first get up that helps realign those circadian rhythms. If you're interested in learning more about red light therapy and its various health benefits, then check out the link in the description. So morning light exposure is incredibly important, but also just getting exposed to light throughout the day can be very effective as well. So if you're someone who doesn't take a lunch, doesn't take time to go outside during the day before the sun goes down, then I really recommend prioritizing this. So one thing that I'm super passionate about doing, especially in the winter months, is really seeing if I can get outside for at least the last 20, 30 minutes of light. I know sometimes with work it's not possible, but if I can make it, awesome. And then I actually watch and sun gaze as the sun goes down, and this has been shown to realign your circadian rhythms as well. And the third thing that I do to make sure my circadian rhythms are aligned is that I'm pretty intense about my sleep hygiene. So let's talk about what that means. Those of you who aren't familiar with the term sleep hygiene, it essentially just means that setting yourself up as well as your environment for the best sleep possible. So this can be having a completely dark room, maybe you have blackout curtains or wear an eye mask like me, having the right temperature, I'm a 68 degree person and nighttime is the only time where I like to be cooler. Also do my best to avoid blue light several hours leading up towards bed. Now does this mean that I never watch shows or YouTube videos later at night? No, but I have filters over all of my devices where it's basically like a red sepia overlay that automatically happens after 6 p.m. And then I've been known to wear these if I'm laying in bed watching YouTube videos. These glasses are a little next level and they're blue light blocking capabilities, but I absolutely love them. I feel like they actually make me sleepy, so if I'm trying to stay awake, I may not wear these. But I've gone through phases in my life where I've had a very difficult time sleeping and wearing these even a few hours before bed has been really essential. These blue light blocking glasses block 100% of melatonin disrupting blue and green light. So if you're interested in looking like Bono, like me, then you can also check out the link in the description. 
So taking these three factors into consideration, it may seem like I'm doing a lot, but these are all very small shifts and habits and hacks that really don't take up that much extra energy or take much extra effort. In most cases, it's not really adding any extra activities or things to do. It's simply being more intentional about how we do some of the things we do every day, like sleeping, waking up, and hopefully going outside. If you've been enjoying learning about circadian rhythms today, then you might be interested in some of my upcoming videos on seasonal affective disorder or SAD, because the best thing to do with SAD is actually be proactive about it instead of waiting until you slip into a depression. So hopefully I'll see you in some of those.